Any higher? They'll take you home in a box. Guess he'd rather be in Colorado. I got a rustler. You're not gonna believe this, Chief. I'll believe it. Where are you? I'm in jail. And I'll have the rest of the gang before the week's out. Chief, it's me, Broadhurst. Where's McLeod? According to the sheriff, he's a fugitive. <laughs> Here. I picked up about 25 head, 10 miles north of Fairchild Road. Any wire? As far as the eye can see. We're on our way. Twenty-five head, ten miles north, off Fairchild Road. <laughs> Slaughter and dress the beef. You got thirty minutes. Don't waste it. Jefferson. Yours. 
Hey, where are they from? Lazy Q. Oh, that's prime stuff. Well, you think I'd steal anything less? <laughs> <laughs> uh, how many? 25 head. That's 50 sides. $100 a side comes to, uh... $5,000. It'd take a quarter horse to get the jump on you, Clay. Well, that's how I stay in business. Mm-hmm. Okay, Lester, as soon as they uh, load up, you better take off. See you in a week or so. Where are they headed? New York. You sent for me, Chief? I think we finally found a use for you here in the concrete canyons of Manhattan. What's that? Cattle rustling. <laughs> in New York? <laughs> Well, the results of it, anyway. Mr. Pearson's with the Department of Agriculture. The situation has him very concerned. Ever since the recent beef shortage and the high prices that went with it, cattle rustling's been on the increase. Well, my daddy used to say it was the second oldest profession in the world. <laughs> <coughs> it's become a multi-million dollar business, Marshal. Last year alone, Texas lost over $2 million to rustlers. Florida, nearly $3 million. Well, that's a lot of hamburger. Black market beef is not inspected by the Department of Agriculture. You know, that funny little blue seal you find on the meat that says USDA. So the buyers, and sometimes the sellers, have no way of knowing if the meat's contaminated. A shipment of contaminated beef reached New York, and the results so far are five people dead, including one little girl. Eleven more are in the hospital. You have a line on who did it? We've traced it to a uh, meat wholesaler on the west side. Now we've got to find out where they got it. That's why I sent for you, McLeod. Most of my men wouldn't know a side of beef from a side of fries. You go if Mr. Pearson, give him any help you can. There's a warrant to search the premises, and if Mr. Pearson feels there's cause for an arrest, you'll make it. Yes, sir. Shall we? Yep. McLeod, that little girl's funeral is in three days. I want the people responsible for her death before then. Paolo Banducci? Yeah? Gene Pearson, Department of Agriculture. Sam McLeod, New York Police. <laughs> Just when you think you've seen about everything. Did you sell some meat to Manny's Steakhouse? Yeah, that's my business. I sell meat. We'd like to know where you purchased it. Why? It was contaminated. Hey, I sell nothing but the best beef. I've got a reputation to maintain, you know? You have a bill of sale, Mr. Banducci? And an inspection certificate? Hey, look, I can't leave the dock right now. If you want it, I'll bring it to you tomorrow. Mr. Banducci, if you cannot produce an inspection certificate, I'm afraid we'll have to place you under arrest. What are you doing? You accusing me of something? I'm an honest businessman. There's some more of that good beef you've been selling. Why don't we have a look, huh? All right. Hey, you can't just go poking around here without a search warrant. There you go. Do you have papers on this shipment? What is this? Police. You mind giving him an answer? I'm sure I got papers. May we see them? Uh, no inspection certificate. What's that mean? It means you're under arrest. Should I put up my hands? That won't be necessary. I don't mind.
wasn't a cop. He wasn't even wearing a gun. Well, there was no way you could know that driver had a gun rigged. Well, I should have known something. He gave in too easy. We put out an APB. The airports and bus terminals are all covered. What about our friend, Banducci? He swears he doesn't know the guy's name or anything about him, but the truck's carrying Colorado plates. You better alert the Colorado police. He might head back there. I want him. So do I. But if he gets out of the state, I'm afraid it's somebody else's responsibility. Guess he'd rather be in Colorado. Guess he'd rather work out where the only thing you earn is what you spend. In the end, in the office, in the end, quiet home. It's all he has to show he lives in New York City. Traffic warrant. 13 Roger, William 6, Paul, Jackson. Driving a little fast there, mister. <laughs> These rented jobs. The speedometer must be busted. I'll take it easy from here on in. Can I see your driver's license, please? Where are you going, Mr. Neal? Denver. And where you been? Chicago. Then how come your plates say New York? I meant I left Chicago this morning. You mind stepping out of the car? What for? Out. You always write your speeding tickets with that thing? I believe New York wants you, Mr. Neal, for murder. There must be some mistake. We won't know that till we get to the sheriff's office. Okay. Hold it. Any higher, they'll take you home in a box. Put out, Dewey. This is my arrest. I'm just trying to help. Turn around, face the car. Okay, now I'll raise your hand. Higher. Dewey, that ain't proper procedure. Just keep going. Now, how did you know he was outfitted like that? It pays to read the wanted bulletins all the way through. Far out. That's him. That's the fellow that killed Pearson. The name is Lester Neal. Where'd they find him? I'm somewhere out in Colorado. Uh, it's called uh, Twin Forks. Chief, I would like for you I to know give McLeod. Me... You want to bring him back? That's the least that I can do. All right. You've got the job. Thank you. I'll be ready in half an hour. 20 minutes. McLeod, I know how important this is to you, so you'll be happy to hear that I'm not going to give you my usual lecture on your responsibility toward this department. I appreciate it. I'm not going to point out that you'll be going to Two Spoons. Twin Forks. As the representative of the 30,000 men on this force. I appreciate it, Chief. I'm not going to say that what you do will reflect on those men, that their reputations will be in your hands. I appreciate your candor, Chief. I am not going to warn you that if anything goes wrong, that if any of the usual habit that seems to dog your footsteps... Chief, I understand exactly what you're saying. I'm going to be on my best behavior. McLeod. Here's your fugitive warrant and the plane tickets. I've already wired the local sheriff. He knows you're coming. You shouldn't have any trouble. Don't have to worry about a thing, Chief. Colorado's practically in my backyard. Those are my kind of people. I'll shoot him on sight. Why didn't you talk to me before you contacted New York? Well, there was an APB out on him. You read too much, do we? Why don't you just play checkers like the rest of the deputies? Evans, we want to talk to you. Now, we got hit again in broad daylight. They got 30 head of prime stock. I got a report. Listen, I'm getting writer's cramp for filling out reports. But what I want to know is, when are you going to put a stop to these cow thieves? When I get as many men and have as much equipment as they got. Don't you ever run out of excuses? 
Now, that's a fact. They got helicopters, trail bikes, walkie-talkies. That's why they can hit you any place they want to, any time they want to. I got three men, two cars, and we cover 315,000 acres. Well, not for long, Bevins. It's gonna take a miracle just to keep you in office long enough to be voted out. Is that why you're running against me, Ben Willis? You figure it's a sure thing? I'm doing it in self-defense. Your sheriff, for another two years, we're gonna be out of business. I'd like to see him on the other side of this badge. Five minutes after they pin it on him, he'll be crying for help. He couldn't do any worse than you've done. They've been at it for six months. Even my 10-year-old kid could have turned up a clue by now. I got more than a clue. I got a rustler locked up tighter than a tick. And I'll have the rest of the gang before the week's out. And that's a promise. You keep that promise, Floyd. And you might keep your job. But if you're just stalling for time, it's running out by the election. It ain't every day that a very important law enforcement official from New York comes all the way out to... Ma'am. Come all the way out here to uh, consult with a local sheriff. Sheriff, later, son. Just move right along. You can pick your luggage up in the back. Who's he looking for? Important visitor. Who is it? Police official. You're kidding. One of the top men in the country. Huh. Where's he from? New York. New York? Personal friend of the commissioner. <laughs> you wouldn't happen to know what his name is, would you? Uh, McLeod. Sam McLeod. <laughs> well, you know, this is a, a little bit embarrassing, but that's me. You? In the flesh. Far out. There you go. Hey, Sheriff. What? I found him. Who? A uh, fellow you've been waiting for? Sam McLeod. This is the big New York City policeman you dragged us down here to see. He looks more like your cousin, Floyd. Give me a smile, Sheriff. I really needed you. Are you always that cheerful? Well, election's a serious thing. Especially when you're gonna lose it. Ah. Well, plane leaves at 4.30. That just gives me enough time to get by to eat and freshen up before I have to be at the airport. Thanks for your help. I would suggest you take a real long bath and have a big meal. Because that's all you're taking with you. I am not surrendering my prisoner. Why not? Because he's the only real solid lead I got to the rustlers. And I need a little time to squeeze some information out of him. How much time? Whatever it takes, but I ain't about to turn him loose. <laughs> you seem to think I'm going to set him free. I'm taking him back to New York, stand trial for murder. Well, New York's got a lot of murderers. They won't miss one more. Well, I don't need to get hard nosed, but I don't think my chief's going to agree to that. He's probably one of them damn civil servants. Ain't hey, nobody can vote him out of his job just at the drop of a hat. I promised the folks that I'd have those rustlers arrested by the weekend. And there ain't no smart New York cop gonna make a liar out of me. I'm from New Mexico. The plane come in from New York, unless you come in on the tail of a mule, that's where you're from. Neil could sit there on his duff for three years and not tell you what you want to know. I don't have time for that. Then maybe you better get your duff on that 430 flight. This may come as a shock to you, but I got a legal paper here that says that that fella is mine. Now you got confetti. You can tear up all the warrants you want to. You still killed a man in New York City, and I'm going to get him back there one way or another. You try, and I'll drop you where you stand.
Well, Cobb, you look like you got a brain rolling around that head of yours someplace. Why don't you talk some sense into him before this thing gets out of hand? I'll try it. You mean you just gonna go along with it? He's my boss. He's also married to my sister. Cobb family got stuck on both ends. What's county seat? Uh, Mercer. Why? You got to try and understand his problem. No, somebody's got to try and understand mine. His name is Peter B. Clifford. Hello, I would like the county courthouse at Mercer. Send me out here to pick up a prisoner. I don't intend to disappoint him. This territory makes its living off of cattle. These wrestlers are bleeding us dry. Yeah. There's even talk of forming a vigilante group to That's patrol the range. Problem, yeah. Well, you know what that could mean? It's a roadside justice, a long rope, a tall tree. We'd be set back a hundred years. I'd like to speak to the judge, please. Any judge doesn't make any difference. He's just trying to keep that from happening. Well, he's doing the right thing. He's just going about it in the wrong way, that's all. Uh, hello, uh, who am I speaking with, please? Judge Starrett? Well, this is Deputy Marshal Sam McCloud. Just a minute. Excuse me. Uh, judge, look, I would like to... Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm going to see the judge in the morning. He's going to give me a writ. Two patrolmen to serve it. I'm sorry that things worked out this way, McLeod. Hey, McLeod. no, look, Cobb, it's not your fault. Hey, I can understand the box that he's in, really. That doesn't make the one that I'm in any less tight. You know what I mean? See? Yeah. Rather spend his time up where the sky looks like a pearl after rain. Once again, I see him walking. Once again, I hear him talking to the stars he makes and asking them to bus fare. I guess he'd rather be in Colorado. Rather play his banjo in the morning when the moon's scarcely gone. In the dawn, the subway's coming. In the dawn, you hear him humming some old song he wrote. Love the gold canyon. I guess he'd rather be in Colorado. He'd rather be in Colorado. I guess he'd rather work out where the only thing you earn is what you spend. <laughs>
the plan? Just hang in there. I need the car keys. Oh. Hold it. Right there. Clifford. Peter B. Clifford. Speaking. I have a quick call for you from Twin Forks, Colorado. Will you accept the charges? Yes. Go ahead, please. My chief? Why are you calling Collect McLeod? Why are you calling at all? Why aren't you on your way back here with the prisoner? Well, which one of those questions you want me to answer first? All of them. Well, let's see. I'm, I'm calling Collect because uh, you can't make nothing but a local call for free. Just where are you, McLeod? Well, you're not going to believe this, Chief. I'll believe it. Where are you? I'm in jail. <laughs> oh, you mean you're uh, conferring with the local authorities, huh? No, not exactly. You mean you're under arrest? There you go. What's the charge? Well, let's see. Uh, there was aiding and abetting uh, a prisoner to escape, uh, discharging a firearm within the city limits, and then I think the other one was uh, assaulting a police officer. This prisoner you aided and abetted wasn't by any chance Lester Neal. One and the same. But it doesn't, uh, you know, it's not as bad as it looks, Chief. Uh... <laughs> I guess, guess we got to cut off. You want to call again? No, no, it's all right. It's uh, just a bad connection anyway. And nothing, getting nothing but a lot of static. Broadhurst, drop everything. McLeod? How did you know? That vein in your neck, it always starts throbbing when it has something to do with McLeod. Well, as usual with him, the message was a little garbled, but near as I can make it out. You know that prisoner he was sent to bring back? Well, they helped him escape instead. Now McLeod's in jail and the prisoner's on the loose. I want you to catch the first available plane to Denver. From there, you catch the shuttle flight to Twisted Knife. At Twin Forks. I want you to find Lester Neal and bring him back here. And get McLeod out of jail. What you do on your own time is up to you. Yes, sir. A friendly word of advice, Broadhurst. Think of this as a suicide mission. Now, if you have the choice between coming back empty-handed or going down in flames, take the flames. Yes, sir. I had a legal right to that prisoner. Now, why would I take the risk of busting him out of here if I was going to get him this morning anyway? Well, maybe you got anxious. Oh, come on. That doesn't make any sense. I suppose not. You know that I had nothing to do with Neil's escape. Maybe. The sheriff knows it, too. Maybe. The only reason that he locked me up is so as I wouldn't find Neil first and take him back to New York. Maybe. Well, maybe you ought to do something about it. I am doing something about it. What? I'm making sure that you don't escape. He killed a man right in front of me, Cobb. Now, maybe if I'd been just a... a little bit smarter, a little bit quicker, maybe that man would still be alive. Well, I tell you, that... That goes down kind of hard. Well, I appreciate your feelings, McLeod. That meat that he brought into New York, some of it was contaminated. It's already killed five people, Cobb. Five people. One of them was a little girl. She's going to be buried tomorrow. But the sheriff's gone clear to the next county looking for him. Well, he ought to be looking for him here. Neil came back for a reason. Only you picked him up before he had a chance to get where he was going. Or maybe he's still trying to get there. I don't even have a place to start. Well, look, we, we know that Neil was involved with the rustlers, right? Yeah. Well, doesn't it stand to reason that if we find the rustlers, we're going to find Neil? McLeod, we've been trying to get a line on those rustlers for six months now. Well, you're not going to get a line on them sitting in here. At least if, if, if you were out sniffing around, well, you, you might pick up a scent. No, they won't hit today. Boy's got 50 men out beating the bushes for you. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really good. You know, when the, when the hound is chasing the rabbits, the fox has the run of the woods. Well, I can't leave you unguarded. Well, take me with you. You can guard me on the way. Oh, Floyd would skin me alive. Floyd is in the next county. That means that you are officially in charge. Not for something like that. Cobb, the more we stand here beating our gums and arguing about it, the more chance Lester Neal has of slipping through our fingers for good. Floyd left strict orders. Floyd is trying to get himself re elected. I'm trying to find a killer before he kills somebody else. Now you think about that. You choose your side. 
Floyd hears about this, we're gonna have a cellmate. Well, at least we're doing something positive. That's a pretty good idea you had, getting the horses, Dewey. You can't ford a stream and go up a hill in this thing. No offense, Dewey, but uh, you're about the most unlikely-looking deputy that I've ever seen. Well, my sister's idea, mainly. One low man in the family wasn't enough? Well, it goes back a long way. You see, my folks died when I was pretty young, and my sister raised me. I've always had this natural affection for music, and she kind of thought that was unmanly. Anyway, the more I played, the more she worried about my manhood. It was kind of funny. I never worried about it. Then this job opened up. She talked Floyd into giving it to me. I guess she figured anyone that carried a gun had to be a man. Well, a lot of people make that mistake. I'll tell you, though, McCloud, I think I could be a good deputy. Well, I think you're a good one right now. Look over there. Looks like we struck pay dirt. Oh, Where are you guys taking these cattle? Thanks. What are you doing with this? Listening to the ball scores? Where are you taking the cows? Well, I tell you, fellas. Might go a little easier on you if you'd cooperate. Deputy Cobb here could put in a good word for you, but he needs a reason. Now, where are you taking the cows? Get off of it. Get on the horse. Mount up. I'll just soon lay you out right where you stand. Get up there. There's only one way to deal with cow thieves. That's to find a tall tree and a long rope. I'm gonna make you famous. They'll be talking about you for years to come. You're gonna be the first man hung in this century for stealing cows. I'm gonna give you one more chance to save your partner's neck. Or are you taking the cows? I ain't gonna tell you nothing. You ain't really gonna do it. Cloud. All right, you're next. Get on the horse. Jordan's. We're, we're taking the cows to Jordan's. Play Jordan? Yeah. Yeah, it won't do you any good, though. But they're all cut up by the time they arrive, so there's no way to prove they're stolen. Who else is in on this? Abel Hollister. He's in charge. Where can we find him? The corral. That's over in Jefferson. It's a bar. It's in the next town. What about Lester Neal? I ain't seen him. Get the rope, Cobb. Look, mister, I'm too scared to lie. Now, that makes sense. Let's see how your buddy's doing. against the law. You ought to know that, son. Huh? 
Lock him up. What charge? Grand theft cattle. Ain't you supposed to be locked up, too? Well, I've been paroled to Deputy Cobb's custody. Sheriff, know about that? I ain't had a chance to tell him. Where is he? Still out looking for that escaped prisoner. No calls and no visitors until I have a chance to talk to the sheriff. Cloud! Joe, what are you doing here? What are you doing out of jail? <laughs> you make it sound like some kind of a crime. What are you doing here? Well, the chief sent me here to find Neil. Any sign of him? Well, no, not exactly. We do have a couple of pretty good trails, though. I'll handle it from here on in, McLeod. What kind of trail? Well, the best one, I guess, is a fellow by the name of Clay Jordan. Who? Clay Jordan. He owns a wholesale meat company. He buys the stolen beef, and then we figure he sells it to fellows like Banducci. Yeah, well, what else have you got? Well, we know uh, the name of one of the rustlers. Of course, we can pick him up at any time. He, he hangs out at, what is that place? The, uh... the Corral. Yeah, the Corral. But the one to concentrate on is Clay Jordan. What does he have to do with finding Lester ah, Neal? Right, right. Here, here, Joe. Just have a seat there for a minute. Now, just think this through. Lester Neal makes a delivery in New York City. That means that he must work for Clay Jordan. Now, if we can get somebody close to Clay Jordan's operation, we're going to get a line on Neal. Watch it when he starts saying we. Yeah, I've noticed that. If somebody sold me some contaminated meat, I'd be a little bit annoyed, you know that? Banducci. Yeah, right. <laughs> I might even be annoyed enough to, to send somebody out here, like yourself maybe, Joe, to get my money back, or at least get a fresh supply of beef. Uh, give me the, uh, the Jordan Wholesale Meat Company, please. Oh, no, McLeod. My job's hanging by a thread no, now. Uh, 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 Mr. Jordan, please. Uh, uh, Joe. Now, be firm and remember that your boss is out a lot of money. McLeod. Be firm. Hello? Hello? Mr. Jordan? Yes? This is Joe Schultz. I'm calling for Carlo Banducci. Uh... How is Carlo? Disappointed in the merchandise you sold him. It's caused him a lot of trouble. Oh, well, I'm sure that I can make that up to him. That's why I'm here. Um, do you know how to get out to my place from where you are? I'll find it, just like I found you. Hey, you know, the, the chief is going to be real proud of you, Joe. I haven't even checked with the sheriff yet. Hey, Joe, what, what are you nervous about? I'm going to be close by. Well, why do you think I'm nervous? Mr. Schultz, my name is Clay Jordan. Please, have a seat. Uh, can I fix your drink? All right, now, so there is no misunderstanding. You are representing the Banducci Meat Company in New York. That's right. And you're here to register a complaint against a shipment of beef. Right again. Well, now, what was wrong with it? It was contaminated. Well, now, every side of beef has got to be inspected by the Department of Agriculture. Not this kind. Well, why? Because it was stolen. And Mr. Banducci wants his money back. Or a fresh shipment. I see. Now, you want me to uh, sell Carlo Banducci stolen beef through you, is that correct? I want what's coming to us. And that's exactly what you're gonna get. Hey, what is this? It's a cheap shakedown, my friend. Now, I've never sold anybody stolen beef. And Carlo Banducci has never heard of you, Mr. Schultz. <laughs> Clay? 
Clifford. Hello. Peter B. Clifford? Speaking. I have a collect call for you from Twin Forks, Colorado. Will you accept the charges? No, McLeod, I will not accept the charges! Chief, it's me, Broadhurst. Why are you calling collect? Well, they only let you make a local call for free. You've been arrested. Yes, sir. May I ask why? For attempting to buy stolen beef. Where's McLeod? According to the sheriff, he's a fugitive. I hope he gave orders to shoot, to kill. All right, what about the prisoner? Disappeared. But, Chief, it's not as bad as it sounds. Maybe it is as bad as it sounds. Hey, what about our call? Yeah, don't we have any rights? Shut up. I'll turn the hose on you. Who are those two guys? We brought him in, told me to keep him on ice till we spoke to you. Maybe we ought to let him make their call. No. Dewey must have had a reason for wanting him in a deep freeze. We just have to wait till he explains it. McLeod, you're worse than phase four. I just can't figure out what happened. Do you have the same kind of success in New York? Well, there's only one thing left to do. Yeah, I just hope Floyd gives us a chance to explain. No, no, we, we got to come at him from the other end, through this Hollister fella. You know, I'm going to do exactly what I should have done the moment I met you, McLeod. What's that? Ignore you. Now, do I listen? That's... That's not No, uh, I'm going to tell Floyd all about Hollister and let him handle it. Well, you do that and you're going to spoil everything. They'll arrest Hollister and that'll drive the whole bunch underground. We won't be able to, to pin anything on Jordan to find Neil. Nothing. It'll be like going after a shark and coming back with a guppy. You're beginning to make sense, McLeod. Right. That worries me. I want to tell you something. When this is over, the, the sheriff's going to be mighty proud. Oh, that's what you told Broadhurst just before he was arrested. You know where we can pick up a semi? McLeod! Overseer to ground crew. Overseer to ground crew. I sure hope one of us knows what you're doing. Overseer to ground crew. Overseer to ground crew. Hey, they're playing our song, do they? Go ahead, Overseer. I picked up about 20 head, 15 miles north off Dearborn Road. We're on our way. So are we. Uh, we're new in these parts. You're giving us a mighty neighborly welcome. Let's go. Somebody stole them.
sure hope Floyd doesn't miss his truck. I sure hope he doesn't notice all those extra cattle on his spread. Sam and the fellow there with the greenish tip is doing. <laughs> now that we got ourselves properly introduced, why don't we get a little better acquainted? <laughs> what stroke of good fortune brings you to Jefferson? Oh, I'm celebrating. Oh, we just love to celebrate. You might say that's our life. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> Ten fifty, you bet you. Out of twenty and keep the change, partner. Thank you. Mm, that's just his mm. <laughs> What is that? Champagne cocktail. Exactly. Uh, then you just drove them up here to sell. Try again. Oh, I give up. So did they. <laughs> <laughs> Bottoms up. Oh, promises, promises. <laughs> Why don't we slip over to the hotel? It's so public here. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe we've done about as much damage as we can here for one night. You don't want to overdo it. Champagne, Gloria Jean. We'll meet you over there. Okay. Good idea. Come on, Dewey. Get a smile on, boy. <laughs> Thanks for the drinks. Come back and see us again. My territory. Now stay out of it. Ever since Neil come back, things have been falling apart. Well, I wouldn't worry about Lester. I mean, I'm gonna keep him on ice till this thing settles down, and then I'm gonna ship him out of the state. And that's not gonna solve it. First, that cop tries to set you up. No, I got a couple of clowns stealing cows right from under my nose, and for all I know, they might be cops, too. All right. All right, you've got problems. Now, have you got solutions? Yeah. Yeah, a very simple one. Shut down. 
That's impossible. Are you listen to me? They know what we're doing. We keep going, they're gonna find some way to prove it. You wanna call our customers in the East and tell them that their orders won't be delivered? Now, they've given me advances against delivery, Abel. I don't have the money to pay them back. Now, maybe you'd like to help out. You could start by selling that new house that you just bought. Maybe take your kids out of that private school. I mean, after all, it was their money that got you all those things in the first place. I earned them things, and I'm going to hold on to them. Then stop talking about shutting down. Now, I've dealt with those people for a long time. Now, I'm already shaky over that contaminated shipment, and then Neil killing that agriculture inspector. I can't turn around to them and say, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I'm closing down because I'm afraid of getting caught. Abel, they send people out here with guns. And the only way that you know they've been here is after you're dead. And what about these two? What if they turn out to be cops? Then you handle them, and you do it quietly. But we've got to keep shipping. You know, McLeod, the next time I listen to you, you have my full permission to shoot me. All right, look on the bright side, Dewey. At least we found Hollister. Yeah, well, if that's the bright side, I'd hate to be around you when a storm hits. Surprise. I'm sorry, ladies, but we had all the surprises our bodies could stand last night. That's why we're here, to apologize and bring a message from Mr. Hollister, the gentleman you met in the alley. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, come on, Dewey. Get out of the lady's way. You're blocking the door. He's oh. sorry he was so rough, but he has to be careful in his line of endeavor. Is that the message? He'd like to see you later. All right. He didn't confide in us. He just sent us as a... Peace offering. Will you pop my cork? I'll pop it after I see Hollister. Oh, well, he's not available right now. We'll see you later. He told us to occupy you as best we could. Come on, Dewey, not now. We got business with Twin Forks. Far out. How can I convince you to stay? making progress. Hello, Chief. You know, Broadhurst, I never realized it before, but there's an awful lot of McLeod in you. You can only hold it so long before you have to book it. Yeah, well, your time ain't up yet. How can I book him when I don't even have the arresting officer? I haven't heard from Dewey since he turned McLeod loose on an unsuspecting world. According to the sheriff, you were the last one to see him. Now, did he say anything that might give us a clue as to where he is or what he's up to? Well, let's see. Think back, Joe. Back to the time before you met McLeod. You remember what it was like to be a good policeman? To observe and retain, to turn a word or phrase into a solid lead? Well, he did say he knew the name of uh, one of the rustlers. Well, we didn't happen to tell you his name. At least that's consistent. But he said the guy hung out in a place called the... Uh, Pen. No, that's not it. Come on, Joe. You haven't worked that along with McLeod. The stable. No, that's not it. The corral. That's it. You mean he hangs out with a bunch of horses? No, this particular corral is a bar over in Jefferson. Well, it's a beginning. I don't like people standing outside my door with shotguns. I just thought I'd give you a chance to think over what I said. 
We're staying. Now, why would you want to bring all that grief down on your heads? Oh, people are friendly, the pickings are easy, and if you're the best competition we got, we're knee-deep in stakes. You know, I haven't decided about you yet. Whether you're honest cow thieves or cops. Then you best give us a wide berth. What I'd like to do is kill you. That'd solve the question once and for all, wouldn't it? Hmm? Only I can't afford the noise right now. So if you stay, you stay right here with me or I can keep an eye on you. You mean you want us to work with you? For me. Well, my partner and me, we're kind of independent. You meet a better class of people that way. Well, uh, Sam, maybe we ought to hear him out. Well, you can stay if you want to, do you? hadn't said anything that interests me. Take one step out that door. You better keep going till you hit Mexico. Look, Sam, it doesn't cost us anything to listen. So what's in it for us? $25 a head. <laughs> We're getting 50 now. Yeah, but I take care of all the expenses. Well, give us 50, we'll split the expenses. 35 a head, and that's all I'm offering. Well, we're gonna have to talk it over. Come on, Dave. What are you doing, McLeod? He wants us to join him. <laughs> well, the harder the chase, the sweeter the catch. <laughs> That's my truck. I'll take the hotel. We'll check the bar. All right, whoever sees him first, I'll give him the right to open fire. <laughs> Surrounded by the clouds. Chief. You got yourself a deal. is worth a signed confession. Oh, yeah? Let's see if we can't get another signature or two. That's good work. Yeah, I figure about $700 worth. Uh-huh. You'll get that tomorrow. <laughs> That's not a very healthy way to start a long-standing relationship. Yeah, well, uh, I get paid and you get paid, and that's the way it works. Well, I'd hate to see anything happen between your pocket and mine, so unless you got $700, tucked away in your sock somewhere, uh, we'll just go along with you. You see, we don't mind if you keep an eye on us, Hollister, just as long as you give us the same privilege. Trust me, I want to make sure they get their money. All right, after the merchandise is unloaded. 
As soon as he gives Hollister the money, we grab him. It's no wonder I don't have time to catch rustlers. I'm too busy arresting smart alecky New Yorkers. How's he right, Chief? Am I glad you're here, Sheriff? Them two prisoners have been yelling their heads off, say they're gonna sue us. For what? False arrest, denial of due process, extreme mental cruelty, and all because we ain't let them make their phone call. Let them make the phone call. I'm not sure Dewey's manhood is worth all this. See, uh, 40 sides comes to uh, $4,000. Minus 700 bucks. Hello? Yes? Well, where have you been? Trying to get two phones. They wouldn't let us make no calls. Here. Yeah. Just sit tight. Now, don't be somebody long. I've got a few matters to clear up here first. Come on, Jordan. Let's get with it. It's been a long day. <laughs> now, you want to hear something funny? Uh, there were a couple of guys. A tall guy with a mustache and a shorter guy with little round glasses. Arrested Chet and Willie the other day. How about that? Now, all of a sudden, you two show up? Now, isn't that a coincidence? You are cops. Listen, why don't you take him on a tour of the plant, Evil? And start with a refrigerator unit. All right, hold it right there. This, gentlemen, is the refrigeration unit. We maintain a temperature of 23 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> so the meat don't spoil. All right, go on. Cloud, we don't have to look for Lester Neal anymore. Do you have any idea where they take the beef? Not a one. McLeod thought he knew. Yeah, but he didn't. That's how come you wound up in jail. Well, if Jordan was involved in the rustling and he suspected a setup, he did exactly the right thing by turning me in. He came off an honest citizen cooperating with the law. Well, I ain't about to bust down Clay Jordan's door. Do you have any other doors to bust down, Sheriff? Man, what a place to expire. Well, there's a way out. Well, here, Dewey, we just gotta find it, that's all. Cloud, we came in the only way out. You got no faith, Dewey. He was wrong about the temperature. He said it was 23 degrees. It's only 22. Oh. Well, that's not going to make it any warmer. There's got to be some kind of a, a warning system hooked up to this thermometer. So that they know if the unit's working or not. Yeah, but the only ones that are going to hear it are the fellows that put us in here. Well, if they... If they think it isn't freezing in here, they're going to... They're going to come in to find out why. When they open the door... That's when we make our move. And these two uh, fellas from New York thought that maybe you might have seen them. No, I'm sorry, Sheriff. The only man that I've seen is this Mr. Schultz here. You know, there's a good part to this plan and a bad part. The warmer it gets in here, the harder that unit works. We're gonna freeze to death in record time. There's drawback to everything, Dewey. Uh, look, gentlemen, we're awfully busy here. I, I... Well, we're, uh, we're awful sorry to disturb you, Mr. Jordan. Come on, let's go. It's the last match.
Don't come back. Sheriff to all highway patrol units. Request assistance. Brown pickup headed north on Highway 18. Approach with caution. Suspects are armed and dangerous. Gotta have this road blocked before we can hit open country. The chopper. We can reach it through Wilson's Canyon. What we need is something that uses all four wheels. Yeah, or all four legs. Chief. Oh, no, I didn't go through all this just to watch you ride off into some sunset. Well, suit yourself, but this ain't 42nd Street. I can handle it. Uh, you mount from the left side. Always mount from the left side. I'll read the instruction manual later. Let me get on this thing. <laughs> hey, how do you make it go straight? You pull the left rein to go left and the right rein to go right. Get up, you... Oh. Finally beginning to understand why you're the way you are. Enough of this would make anyone funny. Hope they have standing room on that plane. <clears throat> I hope you will all pardon me if uh, I don't stand up. <laughs> <laughs> When I pursued them cow-thieving killers into them rugged mountains, I knew they was armed and dangerous. But as your sheriff of Twin Forks, I also knew it was, was my duty to, to apprehend them. Looks like Floyd's good for another two years. Yeah. And with, <clears throat> with some small assistance from my good friends from New York, uh, Shiva detectives uh, 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 Peter B. Crawford and uh, Sergeant uh, uh, Joe Schultz. That's exactly what I did. Without thought of harm to life or limb. As, uh, as you can plainly see. 
He sure has a way with words, doesn't he? There you go. All right. 